This is uh, part two of the tutorial. In part one, I showed how to create a database, add a user, and give that user privileges on the database. In this part, I will show how to create a table on the database. Databases are made out of tables. So again, I'm in my GoDaddy uh, account. I'm going to my cPanel. Under cPanel, I'm going to the section called Databases and finding the application called phpMyAdmin, which will open a new tab. phpMyAdmin will show me on the left side all the databases that I've created under my account. Uh, you have up to 10, and here's where I find, here it is, the uh, database I created for this class, PHP Spring 19 RB. I click on it. And the first thing it asks me to do, because it's an empty database, is to create a table. And I'm going to create a table called TBL underscore products. Prods. P-R-O-D-S. That's a very common um, con uh, convention to start a table with uh, initials TBL, then underscore, and so on. In that table, I need to decide how many columns I'm going to have, how many, they're, sometimes they're called fields. So I think I'm going to create seven. Uh, in any case, if, if I, I can always change my mind later, add more or delete, but I think I need seven of them. And then I click go. And it gives me a template. Let me zoom out so we can see a little more. Uh, it gives me a template for all the things. Here are the seven fields, or the seven, those are going to become the seven headings uh, of my table. And I need to decide, if I think of one product, what does the one product need to have? It needs to have an ID. So I'm going to start all their names with the word prod. And the first one will be a prod ID. Then every product needs a name. Then, uh, then prod price. Notice that I'm using only lowercase and underscore, you know, all the web naming um, conventions. The next one will be a desk for description. And the next one will be prod IMG image. Now, I don't really enter the image itself into the database. What I enter is the name of the image. So it's basically a piece of text. It's, it's a URL. It's telling the database where to find the image. Um, Another one is going to be prod cat, and cat is short for category. What I'm going to do is assign a number to each one of my products so it knows which category it belongs to. Uh, my imaginary furniture store is going to have three categories, uh, something like uh, beds and uh, chairs and uh, tables. So I'm going to have three categories. I'm going to name them one, two, three. So each product is going to have a number assigned to it. Does it belong to uh, department or category one or two or three? Then one more is going to be prod underscore featured. I'm going to simply use that as a boolean, as a number that's only zero or one, where I'm going to mark in each department, I want to have at least, in each category, I want to have at least one product that's like the featured product, and that's the product I want to show on the home page. Like, you know, one bed, the, the featured bed, the featured desk, and the featured, you know, chair. So now I named all my fields. The next thing is on the next column to decide what type of data they are, because basically they're like variables. So product ID is going to be an integer, because I want it to be a number. And the only other thing I'm going to do with that number, two things actually, is integer requires a length or a value. And if I give it, let's say, five, that means that I'm limiting it to an integer with five digits. That's 99,999, almost 100,000 um, products. So that's more than enough. And like I said, if my store grows, I can change it later on. It doesn't mean that the number goes up to five. It means it goes up to a five-digit number. Default, I don't have to touch. Collation is the language encoding. I don't have to touch. Attributes, I don't have to touch. 
I will not check null. Null means that it can stay empty, but I cannot have an empty product ID. Um, I will do two things here. I will pull down the menu that says index and say that this is going to be the primary key of my table. Primary key means that it's the most important column and using that I can identify an entire row. In other words, later on I could just say bring me product ID number 12 and it'll bring me everything about that table. So that's called the primary key. Okay. And one more thing, which is AI. AI, in this case, stands for auto increment. And when I check that, that means that if it's a number, all I'll have to do is number the very first one, and then any other product that I add will automatically get a number that's one higher than that. I don't have to give them numbers and remember, oh, did I already use number 13? Did I already use number 37? Whatever new product I add will automatically be incremented, will get the next available number up. Next, product name. Product name will not be a number, it will be what's called a var char. Var stands for variable and char for character. Var char simply means that it's a field, a uh, text field. That's one of the uh, methods to create a string. I will also limit it to a certain number of characters, let's say um, 24 or 32, let's say 32. That means the name of the product could be up to 32 characters. Nothing else to do there. Product price. Now, I could leave it as an integer, but then I'll be able to name only prices that are whole dollars. I want to be able to pr to name prices that have, you know, two decimals, like, you know, most prices, 9.99. Um, so the um, type that I will use is called double. And under double, I will type 7, 2. What does that mean? It can have seven digits to the left of the decimal and two to the right, uh, which means I can have a price that's like, uh, you know, a seven digits number and then point you know, the cents. The cents are always going to be, uh, you know, two decimals. So seven overall w out of those two decimals. And uh, if I want later on to sell really expensive stuff that has like, you know, nine digits and so on, I can always uh, update that. But most, you know, prices, seven digit numbers are more than enough. Uh, next, the product description, I'm thinking that might be a slightly longer text, so I don't want to use varchar with a limit. I don't want to limit it. So the one format of text that is simply unlimited by definition is simply called text. And for text, I will put no limit. It does not accept any limit. It'll show me an error if I try. And text simply means that it's um, a large, you know, it ex expects a large, uh, a long piece of text, like a description, you know, and so on, a few paragraphs. So I'm saving the room for that. The product image, like I said, is going to be a string. So Varchar, and I think also 32 characters should be more than enough, which means the name of the JPEG, you know, blah, 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 dot JPEG together cannot be more than 32 characters. For the product category, I will leave it as an integer because all I need is a number, which is one, two, or three, which means one digit. So the limit on the length will be one. That means I can also later on expand it to up to nine categories, right? One digit can hold uh, numbers from zero to nine. That's actually 10 categories. Um, and then product featured will also stay an integer with also one digit, out of that digit, I intend to use only the characters zero or one. Every product that I add will either have zero if it's not featured and one if it is. So in other words, I'll be using it as if it's a Boolean. And that's pretty much it. So again, out of all those things, what did I do? I gave all my seven fields numbers, uh, sorry, names, uh, very important for the class to stick with these names because all the code we'll be using to retrieve the, uh, the products will rely on those names. So we got to be consistent. The type, integer, varchar, double, and so on. Uh, in the um, instructions on the Word file, there's a screenshot of exactly what you're seeing right now. Uh, length, 
and values. All the fields need a length or limit on their length except the text. Leave that empty. Text has no limit. Everything else stays empty except I tell the very first one that it's the primary key. In other words, that's the one unique field that I'll be using to retrieve entire row. And also I told the primary key, the product ID, that it's auto increment, which means every new uh, product I add will be uh, one number higher automatically than the next one. Then on the bottom right, there's a button called save. And if I didn't commit any errors, what I should see now is a preview of what my, the structure, see it says structure, the structure of my field is. It also has a little key icon next to product ID, which indicates that's the primary key. If at any point I'm looking at this and I'm going, oh, I forgot that I really wanted, I don't know, the integer here to have a limit that's bigger than five, I can always select it and click change on the bottom and it brings up just this field and I can change whatever I want to change. In this case, I don't want to change anything, so I'm saving. And I can also add more fields before or after. Uh, one more thing before this tutorial is over, as long as we add all the right information, the order doesn't matter. Uh, it makes sense to enter them in this order just to keep up with the same things that everyone else is doing in class. But just like any other variables, it doesn't matter in what order we uh, uh, um, state them, as long as each one of them is accurate in itself. The next tutorial on the next video is going to be about populating this table with content. And we will do that in two ways.